Hi everyone. Good day. Welcome again to our English for 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. My name is Miss Carms and today we are going to talk about lesson 5 entitled Present Day Fable. Okay, so I'm sure that you have heard, you have read, or you have watched a fable before. <laughs> okay, especially when we were still young. In my case, class, I really loved to read and watch fables because for me, it's, it was really entertaining. So with that, I'm pretty sure that you can answer to my first question, and that is... Okay, what is a fable? All right. So I'm sure what comes in your mind is that when it comes to fables, the characters are not humans, or the main characters are not humans, right? Okay, so let's go over to the definition of fable, everyone. Okay, and here it is. So fables are short literary accounts in verse or in prose which have animals as characters. Right, so animals as characters, everyone know. However, class, fables actually is not limited to animals as characters only. Okay, fables also feature plants, objects that they inanimate, um, forces of nature, or even legendary creatures. Okay, so that's for the fable. And in the first definition, everyone, you have to remember that fables are um, written in verse or in prose. Okay, take note of that. It's not only in prose, no, in paragraph form, but actually in verse. Okay, next is that fables narrate an incident from which a lesson may be learned, especially about responding to tempting situations. So just like any other stories, this uh, fables also contain moral values and principles. Okay, so just like parable, no, they are similar in that way. Okay, in that way that uh, both um, fable and parable um, illustrate instructive lessons or principles. But take note, class, when it comes to parable, the characters are human. Okay, humans, you know, among the characters. Uh, and for the fable, they employ animals, plants, objects, and other characters. Okay, next is most fables have a saying or a proverb which indicates the lesson that the fable wants to put across. So if you will read a certain fable you know, after the story or, or at the end of the story, you'll be able to read a saying, especially a proverb, that most likely give us like the summary of what is happening in the story, especially about the moral lesson of the story, of the fable. Okay? All right. Okay, now let's proceed to the next slide. Okay, are you familiar with this one plus? Aesop, Aesop's fables. Mm, this is very particular and famous in my time. <laughs> Aesop's fables. Okay, so class, it is said or it is believed that a man named Aesop has initiated or has created this literary form, the fable. Okay, so Aesop class is a Greek slave um, that has or that is said to have created this literary form and he eventually won his freedom because of the many fables he authored. So I have heard the story that uh, again Aesop is a slave and when he, his co-slaves, and their master journeyed towards Rome. So um, by the time that they, um, they do some rest you know, in their journey or during their journey, so Aesop is the one who will ent entertain uh, their master and also uh, his co-slaves. So he, he entertained by by um, storytelling, 
okay, and the characters are animals, and that has created what we now call fable. Okay, so Aesop's famous fables class and scripts provide great entertainment for children and kids. Right, so the fables of stories are all very short, so that is to keep the attention of the children. Right, and Aesop's fables feature familiar animals loved by children and kids. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so I believe you are familiar with these um, stories, these fables, okay? Because in my case, no, these are actually my favorite fables, so I pick them up and, you know, give it as an example. Okay, anyway, the first one of the ant and the grasshopper. So I hope that you can remember what this story, uh, what is the story in here, what happened to the ant and the grasshopper, the moral lesson, also this one of the lion and the mouse, the crow and the pitcher, and also this one, this is very famous, the hare and the tortoise, All right? Okay, um, but we are actually not going to talk about those um, kind of fables, yeah, because I, I know you have read uh, them, so I will actually introduce you uh, another set of fables, and let's go now. Okay, here. So today, everyone, we will talk about the present day fables. And they are entitled uh, this one, Fable of the Winged Ants in Search of Light. And the second is a fable of the sanitized man flexing his power as best as he can. So they, uh, these two fables are Eloka fables written by Benjamin Pasqual. Okay, so um, these two fables class are actually not written in prose, but they are written in verse. Okay, so that's why it's entitled present day fable. No, uh, these fables are created or written during the post colonial era. Okay, so th these are considered post-colonial fables, which reflect development in literary craftsmanship over the years. All right, so um, let's get started now with the first fable. Okay, and that is entitled Fable of the Winged Ants in Search of Light by Benjamin M. Pasqual. Okay, so... Okay, let's read this one. They spend their acrobatic lives during, doing trapeze arcs about the white tube of fluorescent lamp that drives them into a fury of delight. But in a plate of water they see the light, this time more animate. From their pendulum ecstasy, they dive into the fatal plate. And that's it. Okay, that's how short this fable is by Pasqual. Mm -hmm. So, of course, for this discussion, I will be asking you questions. And I want you, class, to try to answer to my questions before I give you the answers. No? Okay, shall we read it again? Okay. They spend their acrobatic lives doing trapeze arcs about the white tube of fluorescent lamp that drives them into a fury of delight. But in a plate of water they see the light, this time more animate. From their pendulum ecstasy, they dive into the fatal plate. Okay. So class, while we are reading this fable in verse form, I hope that you can imagine what happened here. And I hope that you're familiar in this kind of scenery that you can see on the picture. All right. Okay. So before we go over to our, to my questions, let's have first um, unlocking of difficult words that we can find in the fable. So first of all, the word fury. When we say fury, it means intense, 
disordered and often destructive range. Okay. Next, delight. Extreme satisfaction, joy. Okay, so that's delight. Another is animate. When we say animate, it means full of life. Okay, full of life. Next is pendulum. Pendulum is something that alternates between opposites. So magana ano no pendulum. Okay, lastly, ecstasy. Ecstasy is a state of very great happiness, extreme delight. Okay, so again, for this first fable, we have fury, delight, anime, pendulum, and ecstasy. Okay, let's go back now to our um this one to our first fable fable of the winged ants in search of light so class um have you seen or or have you experienced this kind of scenario class when when it's about to rain and you know these winged ants we would like to go uh near the lights at home <laughs> Uh, I actually forgot what's the Visaya term for that. Okay. But I believe most of you know you have witnessed or you have seen this kind of, you know, experience when winged ants would like to go near to your lamps or lights, right? <laughs> okay. So that's actually what this fable is all about. Okay. So my first question to you is, who is the they referred to in the first line? Okay, so by the way, class, for this fable, it has two stanzas. Uh, I wasn't able to put uh, one space after the first stanza. So first stanza has four lines. Okay, until here, you know, them into a fury of the light. That's for the first stanza. The second stanza is, uh, but in the plate of water until the end. So it also has four lines. So for a total of eight lines, class, right? Okay, so going back to my question, in the first line, it says here, they spend their acrobatic lives. So who do you think is the they in here? So if you would like to challenge yourself, class, now again, you may pause my video, okay, to try to answer to my questions. Okay, so the they here are obviously the winged ants. So they are the characters in this story, right? The winged ants. Next, where do you think is the fable set? Or what is the setting of the fable? Okay, as what I have mentioned a while ago, just like my experience, it usually happened here at home. Okay, so prob the possible setting to this fable, it's in the dining room, living room, or in the bedroom. Okay, at, ho at home, no, usually. But it may also happen in some offices or even in the school, okay, that has the fluorescent lamp. Okay, all right. Next, um, the movement of the wing ends are described in the first two lines, right? Okay, now my question is, why does the poet use the phrases acrobatic lives and trapeze arts to describe the winged ants and their movements. You can actually see that now in the first two lines, right? Acrobatic lives and doing trapeze arts. Again, why does the poet use the phrase acrobatic lives and trapeze arcs 
to describe the winged ants and their movements. So try to answer that one. Again, you may pause my video. Okay, so to answer that question, the phrase uh, the phrases acrobatic lives and trapeze arcs are used to describe the dynamic movements of the winged ants, no? uh, similar to those of circus perform performers, right, who swings about high up in the air, showing aerial stunts, right? So, na ay ka ng um, comparison din hi, no? So acrobatic lives, trapeze arts, again, they show, you know, things that we can see on how circus performer, performers do. Okay? All right. Another one is that, what is the situation presented in the first stanza? Again, the first stanza contains the first four lines. Okay? So what do you think is the situation that is shown in the first stanza? So in the class, the first stanza is they spend their acrobatic lives doing trapeze arts about the wide tube of fluorescent lamp that drives them into a fury of delight. Okay, so the situation in the first stanza is that the winged ants are attracted to, attracted to and flying around or flying about a lighted fluorescent lamp. Okay, so as you can see here, no? Doing trapeze arcs about the white ship of fluorescent lamp that drives them into a fury of delight. Okay. So remember the meaning of fury, no? Intense, disordered, and often destructive rage. Okay, so in this case, it, it is expressed here, fury of delight. So the winged ants are in intense happiness when they see the light in the fluorescent lamp. Okay, and they do their acrobatic lives, so they... They fly around it. They're very happy. So that's what the first stanza is showing. Okay. Now, how about the second stanza class? Let's go now to the second stanza. No? It says here, But in the plate of water they see the light, this time more animate. From their pendulum ecstasy, they dive into the fatal plate. Okay. That's the second stanza. Now, my first question to you for the second stanza is that what did they see in this stanza this time? What did they see? Okay, you can definitely um, answer by reading the first line of the second stanza. Or this is considered as the fifth line no, in this poem. So they see a water. A plate of water, right? Okay. So, can you all? But in the plate of water, they see. Okay. Okay. So, uh, actually, uh, if we are going to review you know, our previous um, lesson, there is an astrophe here in this line. But in the plate of water, they see, right? Um, Remember when you see when you say anastrophe, that's the inversion of words, right? So there is inversion of words here. Because usually you can say, but they see uh, in a but they see a plate of water. As simple as that. But in this line it is expressed in but in a plate of water they see. No? Okay. So anyway, uh, my next question is what distracts them? Okay, so there is, um, eventually in this stanza, the winged ants are distracted. So what distracts them? 
they are distracted from okay from the reflection of the light bulb on the plate of water okay so basically again the winged ants are distracted to the reflection of the light from the plate of water from the water below the light okay so in this stanza no but in the plate of the water they see the light this time more animate in this line no from their pendulum ecstasy so remember the uh you know what's pendulum and class it moves like this so that actually shows again the movement of the winged ants now in a pendulum kind of movement and then when we say ecstasy a state of very great happiness yes so it is in here from their pendulum ecstasy they dive into the fatal plate okay so as you can see the winged ants got distracted to the light that is reflected from the water under the the fluorescent lamp no so since they got distracted they dive or they went on the water and eventually what happened to them in the end in the end the winged ants died right so we can conclude that winged ants died because of the word fatal fatal plate okay so the plate that contains the water is dangerous for them okay so if you notice know plus no um the characters the winged ants they are so naive that they didn't know how dangerous the water is they got distracted to the water right why do you think class why do you think the winged ants got distracted and uh attracted also to the uh water on the plane below the floors of land why do you think <laughs> okay you can actually answer that one by going again to the uh sixth line okay can you the light this time more animate okay so more animate so remember the meaning of animate no full of light life okay because the reflection of the light on the water it's animate since it may move no where should my move and then it's really uh attractive diba so that is why they did, the wind and decided to to dive into the water but they didn't know that um that may be the end of their lives okay and that is what happened to this story okay so sadly they died okay they got distracted to the plate of water so anyway uh have you also tried doing this one class now uh, when the wind ants go you know there are many you know they go near to the fluorescent lab they are attracted to the light and then we get a pail of water you know under the fluorescent lamp and then if you notice that one na ajoy mga matagak no so i have that kind of experience class at home especially when i was still very young because i find it really you know entertaining for me when i was still a kid okay but did you know class that this story is reflective also to to some of our experiences right do you think so mm -hmm. okay anyway um we can obviously get a moral lesson from this one no but i have another question by the way what kind of conflict is taking place in this fable is it an internal conflict or external type of conflict remember class we discussed in i think that's the lesson 3 discussion no, about the conflicts we have internal and external conflict right 
So external conflict includes man versus man, man versus nature, man versus supernatural, man versus society. And then when when we say internal conflict, that's um, man versus self, right? So what kind of conflict is taking place in this fable? Okay. Okay. It can actually be an internal or external. Okay, either of the two. It depends, no? So if we consider the person who plays the plate of water to get rid of the bothersome winged ants, then the conflict may be external and that will become man versus um, the creature. Okay? Like we, we will consider this one as man versus animal. All right? Yeah. However, if we consider only the winged ants in the story, so the conflict could be the internal conflict. Okay, internal. So the winged ants versus self. So sila. In response to what is at once seems to be. Right? So it depends. If, if you wanted to... Uh, of course, no? And then, um, even if it's not put in the story, in this fable, um, we can consider that there is a person putting the the plate of water under the fluorescent lamp at the time. And that is why it may be an external conflict. You no know, man versus the animal. Or man versus this creature. My winged ants. But then again, if we only consider the winged ants as the characters, no other man. So it can be internal conflict. Okay, man versus self. All right. Okay, so I will be asking you a question, this question, during the face-to-face -face lesson. What lesson is this fable trying to put across to us as readers? So I'm, I would like to get your answers to the question again during our face-to-face -face class. Okay? All right. So let's go now to our second fable, and that is entitled... Um, fable of the winged and I don't know. Here, <laughs> I have here the questions that I know in the slides. Okay. Mm, all right. Let Let's proceed now to the second. Okay. Fable of the sanitized man flexing his power as best as he can. Mm -hmm. This is again by Benjamin Benjamin M. Pascual, and again this is in verse. Okay, so it's not in prose, but no. So, let's read this one. Okay. Fable of the desanitized man flexing his power as best as he can. Of strippers not, he exclaimed, outraged that all his chemicals had not this quantum creature made. How had this concoction turned false? So with a wily minuscule made a feeling station of his brow, he swung his pro palm, and he, fool, gave himself the unworded blow. Okay. Let's read it again, everyone. Of stripper's net, he exclaimed, outraged that all his chemicals had not this quantum creature minked. How had his concoction turned false? So when the wily minuscule made a feeling station of his brow, he swung his broad palm, and he, fool, gave himself the unworded blow. And that is the fable of the sanitized man flexing his power as best as he can. All right. Okay, so just like the previous um, fable, uh, let's first, you know, unlock difficult words, okay? Now here, all right. So first is the word obstreperous. It is marked by unruly or aggressive noisiness, obstreperous. Next, gnat. Any of various small, usually biting, 
dipteran flies. So it's a kind of a fly, no? Langau. Okay, that's a gnat. Next, quantum. Quantum, large, significant. Okay, so actually, close. No, I I wasn't able to edit this one. But when we, when you say quantum, no, it's the smallest amount or unit of something. Not small. All right, not really large. So apologies for that. I'm just going to edit this one. Next is main. When you say main, to mutilate this figure or wood seriously. Mm -hmm. Another word is concoction. So this is something prepared or devised by combining different ingredients. Uh, okay, different ingredients class that is combined or mixed. That's concoction. Next is wily. When you say wily, full of wilds, trickery, or crafty. Okay. And lastly, minuscule. Minuscule is very small. Okay. So those are some of the words that we can find in the second fable. Obstreperous, gnat, quantum, meme, concoction, wily, and minuscule. Okay, now let's go back to our fable. Fable of the sanitized man flexing his power as best as he can. Okay, now my first question to you is, who is the he who utters the remark in the opening line of the first stanza. So the first stanza, as you can see here, it says, Obstreperous not, he exclaimed. So who do you think is the he in this line? If your answer is the sanitized man, then you are correct. Okay. So the sanitized man, actually, I also have another question to, you know, why is it called the sanitized man? Okay. Sanitized. So in Visaya, limpiado, diba? Or limpiada. <laughs> okay, because it's actually totally opposite to, to the uh, fly here, the gnat. No? So... Um, it only says, or it only want to tell us that the character, the sanitized man, is annoyed to the fly because when there is a fly around, so there is something that is dirty, okay, or the food that is left uh, on the table or somewhere in a place, so um, it's not really sanitized if there is a fly. Okay, so it actually only indicates that the opposite of the two characters, the fly and the sanitized man. Okay, so anyway, the he there again is the sanitized man. Next question, who is the quantum creature that is not maimed or not wounded or endured? Who is, uh, who is this quantum creature? When you say quantum again, it's a small unit or system of something, right? So small. Okay, the quantum creature there is the gnat or the fly, obviously. Right? Okay, next question, class. What is referred to as the concoction in this stanza? Because you can actually see in the first stanza, Again, the first stanza plus no, it, it contains four lines. I will just edit this one. So, obstreper is not. He exclaimed, outraged that all his chemicals had not this quantum creature remained. How had his conclusion turned false? It's the first stanza. No, it contains four lines. Uh, what do you think is considered as the concoction in this fable? In the first stanza class. But when you say concoction, let's go back now to the definition. Something prepared or devised by combining different ingredients. So it's a mix of ingredients. 
What do you think is considered as concoction in this fable? I guess we have to see on our minds. Okay. Uh, the concoction here in this fable is the insecticide. Okay. So the sanitized man, in other words, in this first tensa. So uh, first of all, no, the fly or the gnat keeps on flying around uh, the sanitized man. And the sanitized man is annoyed because he doesn't like um, some kind of a dirty creature around him, you know, as what is indicated in the description, sanitized man, right? And so he tried to get a concoction or the insecticide to try to maim or try to endure the gnat, okay? Eventually, um, he was unsuccessful because it's indicated in the third and the fourth line. It is stated here, had not this quantum creature maimed, uh, again, the gnat is not injured. How had his concoction turned false? So there is a question na, kung sabi sa'yo pa nga nung wala man na injured na on sa ang langaw sa concoction niya yung gihimo or sa insecticide. Okay? All right, so it was the first stanza. And in the second stanza, it says here, So when the wily minuscule made a filling station of his brow, he swung his broad palm, and he, fool, gave himself the unworded blow. Mm -hmm. So my next question to you is, Yeah, what, what happened naman? <laughs> okay, what happened in this second stanza? Okay, so what was the situation in the first two lines in the second stanza? So the first two lines in the second stanza says, So when the wily minuscule made a feeling station of his brow, it's the first two lines of the second stanza. So what happened here? So when we go back to the meaning of minuscule, it, it, it means very small. So that is actually the fly in this fable, no? the gnat or the fly. So when the gnat or the wily minuscule made a feeling station of his brow, what do you think is the gnat or the fly doing in the, these two lines? Okay, so um, wily... By the way, when you say wily, no, it means full of trickery, crafty, or wiles. Okay. So in other words, class, what happened in the first two lines of the second stanza is that the wily or the deceitful um, fly landed on his forehead or somewhere in his um, brow. And when you say feeling station, so probably me. What do you call uh, that one in English? Kaya ba mo ni pa ak something? Or basta ni land din ano ang fly. Okay. And the next two lines, it says here, He swung his broad palm, and he, fool, gave himself the unworded blow. So who is the he referred to in these two lines? So that is the, the sanitized man, right? So what did he do when the wily minuscule or the fly landed on his brow? He swung his broad palm and he full gave himself the unworded blow. So in other words, the scientized man wanted to try or wanted to kill the fly. So he slapped uh, using his palm of course, his forehead. Okay, in order to catch the fly. But, again, he was unsuccessful doing that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is, um, yes, it is indicated here in the last line, no? And he, fool, gave himself the unworded blow. So when he tried to swung his road palm, 
So, nasakitan siya, class. Okay, he was unsuccessful in doing that one, trying to catch the fly at the same time. It was painful. Imagine that, class. He will do that one in your forehead. No? Yeah. Kusgo ni mo para makatch ni mo ang fly. Okay. So, that was unfortunate for the sanitized man. Right? Mm-hmm. So, there is actually paradoxical um, situation here, no? In this fable. Okay, so what is the paradoxical about the resolution of the conflict? Okay, so the conflict here, obviously, it's the, um, again, man versus the creature, no? Or man, let's say man versus animal. So obviously, nanagay ka ng man din he, unlike the sa first fable, no? Yes, but what is paradoxical about the resolution of the conflict? They're having a conflict, and the resolution is that the, the sanitized man is trying to to kill the fly by using insecticide and by swinging his road palm. But what's paradoxical in this resolution of the conflict here in this fable is that in the process of trying to kill the gnat or the fly, the man hurts himself. Right? By the way, class, when we say paradoxical, no? Paradoxical is seemingly absurd or self-contradictory. Okay? Something with two meanings, kumbaga, that don't make sense together. That's paradoxical. So, sa kani, again, a paradoxical a resolution to this kind of conflict in this story is that when the man tried to kill the gnat, he gave or he hurt himself instead. Okay, so, siya na noon ang nasakitan. Okay. So, class, um, I will also ask you this question no, during the face-to-face. What is the moral lesson of the story? And I would like to hear from you orally uh, that your answer to that question. Okay. So again, no, what is the moral lesson of the first fable and also this fable? Okay. So, but this time class, no. Okay, the questions. So before we end our um, discussion or recorded discussion here. So we have here, no, the Proverbs. I- I'm sure that you are familiar with this Proverbs. Okay, so unlike earlier fables of pre-colonial times, which usually contain saying or proverbs for their endings, so the fable in this lesson do not have quotable maxims. So here are some English and translated proverbs that could go with the fables of Benjamin Passepaugh. So, but I'd like your class to identify. We have four proverbs here, Mano. And I'd like you to identify which proverb suits the first fable and which one is for the second people. Okay. So here, uh, the first one is look before you leap. Okay, para asan na siya nga fable? Is it for the fable of the winged ants or the fable of the sanitized man? Okay, so look before you leap. That is for the first fable. Ito mga winged ants. Mm-hmm. One shouldn't act without first um, thinking of the possible consequences or dangers. Right? But it may also be related to the second pudno. But uh, most probably for the first fable. Next, do not count your cheeks before they are hatched. So remember class, the meaning of this one, no? This fable, it means do not count on something that has not yet happened or don't make plans based on good thing happening before it has actually happened. It's do not count your cheeks before they are hatched. And this one is for, obviously for the second fable. The fable of the sanitized man flexing his power as best as he can. Okay? Yeah, because... Um, he was so sure 
uh, of killing the gnat or the fly by using insecticide and also by trying to um, to catch it, you know, by swinging his palm on his forehead. Yeah, but he did it. He was unsuccessful. So that relates to the second fable. Next, not all that glitters is gold. So this means that but not everything that looks pre precious or true turns out to be so. Is this for the second or the first fable? Okay, this is for the first one. Okay. Yes, because the winged ants, they are attracted to the light in the water, but they didn't um, see how dangerous it is. Okay, in other words, not all the glitters is gold. They can be dangerous. Okay, take note of that. Lastly, a wise man doesn't set his foot on the ground. He watches his next step. Or in other words, you have to plan everything you know, critically before doing something. And that is actually for the second fable. The fable of the sun ties the man, flexing his power as best as he can. Okay. Yeah, so the sun ties man, in other words, is not wise enough to plan about getting rid of the fly or the gnat. Okay. All right, class, and that actually ends our lesson five present day fable. I hope you have learned uh, from this fable. And again, I'm going to ask you the question about the moral lesson you got from these two fables of Benjamin Pascal. So more instructions and activity will be done in the face-to-face -face class. So that's it for today, class, and see you again next time. Goodbye.